So, in this lecture we will uh, uh, talk about control system. So, control system is a part and parcel of many smart systems that we design. So, control system essentially is designed to perform certain actions which the smart uh, structure has to perform. So, in this lecture we will try to look at what are the ingredients of the control system, what are the mathematical models that are required for control system and what are the basic stability concept of a control system and some small basic control system design concepts we will actually uh, study uh, in this lecture. So, to give you some introduction on controls or uh, control system basically the first control system was started way back in 1900s. Control essentially means pre preventing some undesirable effects in a structure through an external stimulus. Okay. One cannot visualize a robot uh, without a control system, B robot does a multiple actions and these actions are possible basically by control systems. Today control plays a major part in almost all branches of science and engineering. In many space vehicles, missile guidance and robotic system control has become an integral part of the manufacturing process. Where does the control system fit in smart systems? So, in smart systems we require control techniques for controlling what, are, what we call uh, displacements and its derivatives like velocities and accelerations, pressure and its derivatives like force and stress, temperature, humidity, viscosity and many more parameters that are basically part and parcel of this comp uh, smart systems. The control system always requires an external stimulus and this external stimulus is provided by smart actuators basically through what we call the constitutive laws and some of the actuators that we studied in previous lectures are the piezoceramic actuators like PZT, magnetostatic actuators like uh, Turfinaldi, etc. So, some of the engineering applications of control systems where uh, the smart uh, where, uh, where uh, we would like the smart systems to perform. One is the vibration control where we control uh, uh, the, uh, the dynamic displacement using control techniques. We have noise control, excessive noise is not desirable in many of the automobiles and aircrafts. So, where uh, the acoustical disturbances are controlled through control techniques. In helicopters, uh, where helicopters are always produce excess, excessive noise because of the rotor displacements. So, we try to control it by actuating the flaps, uh, by doing so we control the exterior noise or sometimes we try to design a control system to idea to treat the noise path so that it does not reach the helicopter cabin so that the cabins are quieter. Many a times we also design a control system to uh, change the shape a flat plate can be bent and in aircraft we can change the uh, aer aerofoil shape aerofoil controls the flow by changing it we can uh, avoid vertices uh, vertex uh, which basically is one of the root cause for the air, aircraft to stall. So, now let us go to control definition. The principle behind all control techniques for smart system is to generate additional forces for enforcing control of the required variable. So, why we need? We need to control something. So, what we control is a control variable. For example, in vibration control, control system generates damping forces that reduces the dynamic displacement or dynamic amplitudes, which is one of the control variables. So, now the question is where does this additional force come from, especially in smart systems or in the traditional uh, non smart systems? In traditional control system, in the non smart systems, this comes from what we call the error signals. We will talk about error signals a little later in this lecture. In smart systems, they are provided by the smart actuators through constitutive law. So, let us uh, define some of the control terminologies which we use traditionally in control system design. Let us first begin with what do we mean by control. So, control means sustained release of energy for limiting or controlling the response of a desired control variable by inducing an additional input in the form of manipulated variable. So, now the manipulated variable is something we input to the system. Now, we next define what is control variable. So, we need to control something in the uh, control system. So, what is that something that we are going to control? That is the control variable. 
So, the control variable is a quantity such as displacement, force, stress, strain, pressure, temperature, etcetera that requires to be measured or controlled. These are necessarily an output variable and control of the control variable is normally performed through an additional input that is provided to the actuator in the smart system and which is called the manipulated variable. Next we define what is called a plant. Plant is defined as a physical object that requires control such as the mechanical device, helicopter blade, mechanical gear, cantilever beam etcetera, aircraft, spacecraft these all represent what we call the plant which requires control. Next we define what is disturbance. A signal that propagates through a system carrying considerable amount of energy is what we call disturbance. For enforcing control of a system one may require many such disturbances which can be internally generated especially in a smart system through smart actuator or externally given as an input as in the case of traditional control systems. Next we define one of the very important parameter in control what we call the feedback control. If due to a disturbance the difference between the output of the system which we are trying to control to some reference input is reduced and if this reduction was obtained based on this difference then we term this operation as feedback control. So, one of the factors that uh, uh, on which the feedback uh, control depends is the error signal. So, now we will define what is an error signal. The difference between the output signal and the feedback signal is what we call the error signal. In many cases the feedback signal may be a function of the output signal and its derivatives. In structural applications such as vibration control, noise control, the output signal is normally displacements or strain or its derivatives namely velocities and acceleration. Next we will define what is called closed loop control. So, the system the, the control system we design is normally closed loop control system which is the most efficient control system. So, it is defined as follows when the output of the system is brought to the desired value by feeding the, the error signal to the controller under the feedback control such an action is termed as the output uh, 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 closed loop control. There is an alternative to closed loop control which is used in some cases but sparingly which is called the open loop control. A system in which the outputs do not play a major role in the control action is termed as the open loop uh, control. So, that is the error signal is not needed at all in the uh, open loop control as opposed to the closed loop control. That is the output is compared is not compared with any reference signal and hence fixed operation condition exists and hence the accuracy is not always assured in the open loop control. So, we have defined the major control terminologies now. Next we will define what is we call the linear system because most of our control system design is based on the linear system. A system is said to be linear if the principle of superposition holds. So, what do we mean by super, a principle of superposition? That is the response to several inputs can be obtained by treating one input at a time getting the response and adding the total response together. So, if the governing equation describing a system which is of constant coefficient type such a system is called linear time invariant system. So, now we have defined what all the basic uh, terminologies that are required for control systems that are involving in design of the control systems. Next we will talk about what are the mathematical models that are required to design the control systems. The fundamental to most of the control system is we need to have a differential equation which is in most cases is of a second order linear systems, second order linear differential equation. And there are two kinds of systems uh, control system we can de uh, design. One is called single input single output SISO system which is essentially based on transfer functions determination of the transfer function because there is only one control variable here. And the second uh, aspect the second method is the multiple input multiple output control system where more than one control variable will be there. 
and normally we use what is called the state space uh, approach modeling. We will talk about both of these modeling in this lecture. Let us now come to transfer function. What is transfer function? How do we define it? So, in a traditional control system, any traditional dynamic system, you have an output, you have an input. The algebraic relationship between the output and input is what we define as transfer function. Such a relation is possible only in the frequency domain or in the Laplace domain, which is also a frequency domain and it is not valid in the time domain. If the output of the system in the frequency domain is given by say y, the output of the system uh, in the frequency domain is given by y which is a function of the spatial quantities x, y and z and also the so frequency defined in radians per second. And if the input of the uh, given to the system is x, okay, then we define the transfer function g in frequency domain g of omega which will be equal to output y hat divided by x hat. Okay. It is a simple thing for every frequency there is a relation and this is what we call the transfer function. So, in the design of controllers it is necessary to obtain a transfer function which is normally characterized using Laplace transform and there is a straightforward relationship between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. The use of Laplace transform however is limited to only single control variable that is it is valid for only SISO systems. So, let us now talk about Laplace transform. So, the Laplace transform of a variable of a, a function f a time domain function f which is also spatially do, uh, dependent is given by this expression 9.2.1. Okay. So, we have the Laplace transform defined by this uh, equation. The Laplace transform of the derivative of this function is also defined by this expression here which also depends upon the function evaluated at time t equal to 0. So, that should be known before. The second derivative of this function the Laplace transform of that is given by this equation here which depends upon not only the value of the function at time t equal to 0 and also the derivative of the function at time equal to 0 first derivative of the function. Like that we can write the Laplace transform it can be extended to the nth derivative. So, what does this Laplace transform do? Why it is so powerful? Why it is so useful? So, basically Laplace transform transforms the differential equation into a set of algebraic equation which are more easier to handle. So, now let us come back to our control system. Let y be the output variable and x be the input variable. The linear differential equation of nth order temporal derivative and mth order temporal input derivative where n is larger than m can be written by this nth order differential equation. The left hand side is basically the differential equation, right hand side is essentially the, the input because y is the output, x is the input. So, when we apply the Laplace transform okay, and assume that 0 initial condition that is the value of the function at time t equal to 0 and its derivative is basically and all the higher derivatives at time equal to 0 is 0 that is the 0 initial condition we can write the governing equation into a set of algebraic equation where y is the output in the Laplace domain, x is the output in the Laplace domain and we can get this. Okay. So, this 9.24 is basically an algebraic relation which has a numerator as well as the denominator. So, basically what we do here is we can factorize the numerator, we can factorize the denominator as give, given here. So, basically the numerator can be factorized as s plus alpha 1 plus s into s plus alpha 2 multiplied to s plus alpha m and similarly the denominator s plus beta 1 into s plus beta 2 to s plus beta m. So, the transfer function will be 0 at 
values minus alpha 1, minus alpha 2, minus alpha 3 etcetera. The denominator will be 0 at uh, minus beta 1, minus beta 2, minus beta 3. So, when the numerator is 0, we say there is a 0 in the transfer function. When the denominator is 0, which makes the transfer function infinity, we say these are the poles. So, basically poles and 0 are the important parameter in control design. So, basically poles are very important for the design of controllers. In vibration analysis, pros, poles represents the resonant condition where the driving frequency equal, uh, will equal to the natural frequency which basically uh, uh, increases the displacement or the vibrational amplitude to an enormously large extent which has to be avoided at any cost. So, let us come back to a single degree of freedom system. What is a single degree of freedom system? where there is only one predominant motion that means there is only one control variable. So, this is basically given by a second order differential equation where x double dot x dot are the derivative of x which represents acceleration velocity and x is the basically represents the vibrational amplitude and f of t is basically the forcing function. So, when we take a Laplace transform of this we get m s square plus c s plus k multiplied with x hat of s which is nothing but the Laplace transformation of x of t which is equal to f of s. So, x, s, x of s is the output, f of s is the input, the ratio of these will give us the, the transfer function that is m s square plus c s plus k. So, basically the transfer functions the numerator is just one value. So, it cannot be factorized that is there is no zeros in this uh, in this uh, uh, transfer function whereas, the denominator can be factorized into uh, 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 since it is a quadratic. So, it has two poles with the val value alpha 1 and alpha 2 and alpha 1 and alpha 2 are given by this equations here. So, from the above equation we have seen that there are no poles but uh, no, no zeros, but two poles at, uh, at uh, minus alpha 1 and minus alpha 2. The real or complex value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 depends upon the value of the of the radical, the value of this radical. If the c by 2 m is greater than k by m, then uh, alpha 1 will be real and if c by 2 m is less than k by m, it is going to be imaginary. So, for the design of the controller one important property is for the stability of the control system it is necessary that the real part of alpha 1 and alpha 2 should always be negative otherwise the control system will be unstable. So, from the equation above if we substitute instead of the Laplace parameter s by i times omega we can transform the problem from the Laplace domain to Fourier domain then the transfer function is given in terms of omega which is given here and that quantity that is on the right hand side 1 by minus m omega square plus i c omega plus k represents what we call the frequency response function. So, now how do we determine transfer function from finite element method because which is normally used for any control system design. The finite element equation is given by 9.2.10 which is m into x double dot c into x dot k into x equal to f where m, c and k are matrices of size n by n that is it has n control variables. Okay. So, uh, and x, x dot and x double dot are basically the, uh, the, uh, the dynamic amplitudes, x dot is the velocity and x double dot is the acceleration and f is the applied force vector. So, we apply either Laplace transform or Fourier transform to this, we reduce this equation into k hat into x equal to f hat all in the transform domain where k hat is given by the equation 9.2.11 and it is a frequency dependent matrix which is called the dynamic stiffness matrix. So, basically we, uh, we solve 9.2.11 by, sol by giving a unit impulse in the place where you require the transfer function and solve for the unit impulse this matrix equation and whatever the output you get x hat is essentially the transfer function. So, it has to be solved numerically. Now, let us come to the state space modeling. So, a system is said to be in state space if an input 
uh, for a given input the response can be completely determined for all future times with minimum amount of information. Mathematically a dynamic system is defined by a differential equation which is given nth order differential equation. Here y, uh, y is the basically the output variable that we are looking at r is going to be basically the input. The uh, input may contain the input time function or its derivatives. Let us first assume that r of t contains no derivatives of the input function. So, in the above equations the nth order hence uh, all n derivatives are defined should be defined and it requires n initial conditions. We may choose to call all the variables y or each of the n minus 1 derivatives as state variables. Okay. The number of state variables required to model a differential equation is equal to the order of the equation. So, why do we need state space uh, approach? Basically fundamental to state space modeling is to provide a systematic mathematical approach to the analysis and the characteristics of a system by reducing a single nth order differential equation coupled set of differential equation into a set of first order differential equation with each equation defining one state. The set of equations such set of say, equation is called the state equation. So, let us now assume as I said R of t does not contain any uh, uh, derivatives then we can define the state variables as given by 9.2.13 where x1 will be the first state variable which is equal to y my output x2 will be the derivative dy by dt which is equal to dx1 by dt x3 will be the second derivative which will be the first derivative of x2 x4 will be third derivative of y which will be first derivative of x3 and so on we can write n minus 1 and nth derivative. So, the nth state equation is obtained by using the above definition that is we can write the uh, as given in 9.2.14. The equations 9.13 and 14 can be put in matrix form as given here. Okay. So, which when expanded will be shown here x is a vector of all state variables a is called the state matrix b is called the input matrix again y can be there uh, uh, related to the state variable as y equal to c into x. So, these two together form what is called the state space equation which is basically used for our control system design. Now, if we consider that my input on the right hand side is also a function of the derivative of the input function f then r of t is defined by equation 9.2.17 which contains uh, the derivatives all higher derivatives. If we use this our previous definition of the state variable is not valid because it does not eliminate these derivatives. So, we need to define a new set of the state variables. So, these are given here in the equation 9.2.18 where x1 will be instead of y we also introduce c0 minus f my stay second variable x2 will be the first derivative of y minus c0 into first derivative of the input and the actual function then x3 will be second derivative of y minus the second derivative of the function the first derivative of the function and the function itself input function like that we can write the nth derivative. So, once we write this we can choose the new state variables uh, equations as shown below. So, the first equation by dx by dt dx1 by dt will be equal to x2 plus c1 f and the nth one will be given by here this equation. So, in doing so we can write these equations in matrix form which is uh, relating to the state vector on the left hand side the state matrix and the input matrix and the output and input can be derived here. So, in doing so we also introduce an additional parameter d which is given by c naught into f that enters into picture. So, this form is convenient for us to design the state uh, variable when the uh, input that is given to the system is also dependent on its derivatives. So, once we do that now we take the next step is to see how we transform this into frequency domain. So, we take a Laplace transform of this where we write the equation here in the h domain which also contain x of 0 that is the value of the state vector at time t equal to 0. 
So, when we do that in from the first equation we eliminate this x of s and substitute in the second of the equation 9.2.22 then we will get a relationship between the output and the input which will become a transfer function matrix. So, this is given by here. So, output by input. So, which requires inversion of s minus a i s minus a uh, matrix. So, the transfer function is given by this equation here. Okay. So, basically uh, the determinant of s minus a will give me the characteristic polynomial which will give us uh, of the of the control system and the matrix a will give us the poles that is going to be there in this control system for which we have to design our control system. So, let us see how we can apply this to a simple single degree of freedom system. We again come back here this we studied a few slides before this is again a single degree of system where x is the control variable basically. So, m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f of t. Now, to represent this in state space we need to uh, uh, choose the state variables. We take the first state variable x 1 will be equal to x and x 2 will be equal to x dot. So, we can rewrite this reduce this into two sets of equations that is x 1 dot x 2 dot is is related to the this matrix A and x 1 and x 2 is the state vector plus B and again output is uh, given by this matrix C times the state vector. So, we can easily represent this uh, single degree of freedom system into a matrix contain 2 by 2 state vector and uh, a, a vector containing the input matrix output matrix and the output vector. So, from the above equation as in the conventional form of the state equation substituting the matrix A, B, C and D in the derived above equation we can write the transfer functions when we do that in this form which is basically same what we derived before by using our regular uh, transfer function methods instead of using the state space approach. So, now what we have done is we have taken the single degree of freedom system to show how we can derive the transfer function both from your conventional method of transforming directly this equation into frequency domain or using the state space approach. How do we do the state space model from FEM? Again in designing the controller for multi input multi output system especially for structural application one will have to depend extensively on the discretized model because the number of degrees of freedom the number of control variables will be so large. The discretized finite element equation is given by 9.2.28 which is given by m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x where m c and k are matrices x is a vector f is the input all are size n by n and x are the vectors of size n by 1. So, here we choose the state vector as x 1 vector is equal to the actual where the control variable x x vector and x 2 will be the derivative of x 1. So, when we do that and apply our state space model we get the control the, the, the control equation in terms of the state matrix by in a equation 9.2.29 which is given here. So, once we know that we can clearly identify what is the uh, a matrix b matrix and c matrix which will be very useful in the control design. So, what we have now learnt is if there is a system which is of order n by n the state matrix will be of the size 2 n by 2 n. So, we increase the size ok. In addition if we want to do a control system in addition to getting the a b c matrix we also have to gain the gain matrix. What is a gain matrix? Gain matrix is essentially relates the input input to the output y is the output f is the input f is equal to g y where g is the gain matrix which is of the size n into r. What is this r? r is the number of the states that you need to control. So, in terms of uh, vibrational frequency if you want to control 10 frequencies r will be 10 when n will be maybe 100, 1000, 10000. So, basically it is the number of control variable that you want to control it is a control state 
R represents that. Now let us define another important pa uh, parameter for uh, uh, the control system that is uh, the uh, stability. Every control system has to be stable and when is the control system stable? A control system is said to be stable if for if a finite duration input causes a finite duration response. A system is said to be unstable if for a finite duration of input it causes response that diverges phenomenally from the initial value. That is when the output changes unidirectionally and shoots up with ever increasing amplitude the system is said to be unstable. So, when does it happen? So, we studied till now that most second order systems are of constant coefficients which has exponentials as solutions. So, the solution of such will be of the form y of t is the solution for which you are looking will be a e, e to the power of r 1 t plus e r 2 t etcetera ok. And it is necessary that for the the r's can be less than 0, greater than 0 or r's can be complex. So, r is le, uh, 3 cases uh, these are the 3 cases that arises if r is r's are less than 0 the finite output to a finite, a finite input then we say it is stable. When r is greater than 0 there is an infinite output to a finite input that means it is unstable. When r's are complex then we will have a oscillating response because basically they will be of the, uh, uh, of the form sines and cosines. Hence, the determination of stability of a system amounts to determination of the roots of the polynomial. Uh, in, a, uh, in terms of complex variable s, the system is said to be stable if all the roots are on the left half of the s plane. So, if you plot the s versus frequency then it has to be in the left. So, basically that is why in the starting of this lecture I said all the roots should be at the negative. So, that uh, this is on the left side of the s plane or the imaginary axis. So, how do we method uh, de determine the methods of the control? Following are the different methods uh, that are used. The uh, one of the methods is numerically determining the roots of the characteristic polynomial that is uh, fine when the number of uh, degrees of freedom or number of control variables is small so that you can factorize. But if the system is large even if you have more than 3 or 4 variables it becomes very difficult to factorize then we have to use certain numerical criterion such as Ruth Hurwitz criterion, a Nyquist criterion, root locus method or uh, using the state space and transfer function approach. There are two other important uh, parameter that determines the stability one what we call the controllability and observability. A system is said to be not controllable if it does not satisfy these two conditions namely the controllability and the observability condition. Hence, some conditions are specified in terms of control parameter which a system is made to satisfy or to become controllable or, or observable. A system is said to be controllable at some time t naught if it is possible to transfer the system from an initial state x of time t naught to any other state in finite interval of time using the unconstrained control vector. A system is said to be in a state uh, which is in state is said to be observable at some time t naught if it is possible to determine the state from the observation of the output over the finite interval of time. So, using the above definition we can derive the condition for uh, input and output controllability. So, the controllability has to have both because the input has to be controllable and the output has to be controllable. So, the condition for the controllability of input is, uh, is that the vectors that is the output vector b a times b that is a multiplication of the state matrix into b uh, and such products up to a n to the n minus 1 into b. If you, if you have an n by n system or linearly independent or in linear algebra terms in matrix terms the matrix containing these matrix that is b a b the product the product a n minus 1 into b should be of the rank n so it should not be for a n by n system that is this matrix should not be singular if it is singular then it, the, the input is not controllable. Now, we have to check the output controllability. So, what is the output controllability? So, we need to take the output matrix C that repair the output with the input. 
So, that is the C the product of C B, C A B, C A square B and C A, A n minus 1 B into and D and this matrix should not be singular. So, here the uh, this matrix is of the uh, the output is basically depends upon how many control states that we are controlling that is why the term r the, the size of the matrix enters uh, a parameter r comes into the picture. So, in the above matrix the order is of the order m into n plus 1 into r where the matrix a is of n by n b is n into r c is m into r because there are m inputs and d is m into r. So, the condition for output control uh, uh, control VT is this matrix given in equation 9.3.3 should be of the rank m. Okay. So, this is as far as the controllability conditions are there. Now, the observability condition that is the state equation given by equation 9.2.1 that is the state space equation which we derived initially is as observable is only when the output matrix that is C, C transpose A times C transpose pro, uh, product and A, A transpose uh, n minus 1 of the n, n minus 1 state vector into C transpose this matrix should be of order n and should not be singular. So, these are the two important conditions that uh, a control system has to satisfy to make sure that the designed control system is stable. We can also state the conditions for complete controllability and observability even by looking at the transfer functions. This is only of course, true for only some simple uh, systems where the control parameters or control variables are small. That is the system is not completely controllable or observable if there exist common factors in the transfer functions in the numerator and denominator. For example, the transfer function given by this equation here g of s equal to s plus 1 into s plus 4 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 into s plus 3 is not completely controllable or observable because there is a common factor s plus 1 on both the numerator and denominator. So, even that such a system should be avoided. Next this is the last part of the lecture let us take what uh, we know something on the uh, some of the important uh, concepts in the control design. Uh, fundamental to the design of the control system is to place the poles that is from the transfer function we find the poles to place these poles at the appropriate position so that the stability is ensured. Plant is a part of the control system that has unchangeable parts we cannot change because when we want to control a aircraft we cannot change the parts and it is the plant is described by the transfer functions or the state variables. The poles can be shifted at the appropriate position by using a closed loop control around a plant with a feedback gain signal. So, basically we give a feedback gain signal from the, uh, fr from the smart actuator in the case of smart system to appropriately shift the poles to, to a location where the stability can be ensured. Another important parameter is the gain we need to for a closed loop control system we need to have a gain and this gain matrix is the one that relates the output vector to the input vector and the gains can be constant or variable depending upon the control design. So, the control design procedure is as follows how do we go about doing it first the basic or minimum system is determined by having a closed loop unit feedback. Okay. Normally, sensors are assumed ideal that is they have unit gain and only an amplifier is added to the error signal and the plant. The gain is then set accordingly to meet the steady state. So, once we know a unit gain we look at the responses then we increase or decrease the gain uh, based on to see that when the system acquires a steady state response and also the bandwidth requirements which are followed by a stability analysis. For smart systems we have sensors and actuators to receive the sensor input and a controller. The stability of such system is governed by the placement of sensors, the placement of actuator, the error signal, the gain variation and that method of the control design. What are the different methods? The design of the control system involves design of what we call compensation. 
what is compensation? Compensation can be defined in many ways, but the, there are two major ways that we can define the compensation which is always uh, prescribed in the control design. The first way to design a compensation is to modify the basic system in order that the stability of the system is ensured. Stability analysis is very important preliminary step that determines how stable or unstable the system is and hence tells the designer how much of compensation is necessary to ensure the stability. The second step in the design process is to mathematically determine the parameter for the chosen value that is what we are looking at where the poles are, is there any zeros, how do we avoid, what is the kind of gains we need and these are some other things which we need to determine. Now, unstable system will have roots on the left hand side of the gas plane. I told you before itself that if you have the uh, if you have the roots on the right half of the plane then it is unstable. For the stability we need to ensure that the roots are always on the left half of the uh, 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 left half of the uh, S plane basically. So, uh, we need to ensure that. So, for stable response these poles have to be moved from the uh, right half to the left half. So, for which we need to design our uh, error signal such a way that this can happen. In general, one can move rules by many methods. Following are some of the methods. One is by changing the gain, changing the plant, placing the dynamic element at the forward transmission path such as filters, placing a dynamic filter element at the feedback path or feedback all or some of the states. From the above, it is not possible to change the plant, it is impossible. So, some of the other options given here are a possibility and which is more suitable? It is only the designer, a experienced designer will be able to tell depending upon problem to pro problem. So, selection of these is a matter of engineering judgment and also depends upon the nature of the problem. So, now let us talk about some of the very simple controllers for the linear systems uh, that are uh, there that are commonly used successfully used in many of the systems and many of the uh, disciplines in engineering. These are called PD controller, PI controller or PID controller. PD controller is proportional derivative controller, PI is proportional integral controller. PID is proportional integral and derivative controller. From the previous discussion, it is clear that gain is an important parameter governing the design. Increase in gain increases the bandwidth and makes the response very fast. However, we have to be very careful. Increase in gain decreases the damping which is our major motivation of control. We have to damp out the response. So, it has to be optimal so that we get faster response at, at the same time we get an optimal dam damping to control the control variable to our desired level. Damping is somehow improved by introducing a derivative of a signal. So, that is why PD is more uh, useful and if there is a need to increase the accuracy substantially then integrator is used. So, that is why the combination of PID will ensure faster response, better damping and better accuracy. There are several commercially available controllers that combine several of these concepts very effectively. So, now let us describe uh, each one of them much more uh, detail. We have what is called PD controller which is proportional from plus the derivative. So, normally the transfer function of this controller is given by what is given here G f s is equal to k p plus k d times s in the Laplace domain. So, it has no numerator, no denominator. It has one number algebraic relation. If you look at the p 
p i controller that is proportional plus integral the transfer function g of s is given by k p plus k i by s where k p is the gain of the proportional controller k d is the gain of the derivative controller k i is the gain of the integral controller. So, the p i d controller the transfer function is given by g of s is equal to k p plus k i by s plus k d by k d times s. So, as I said k p k d k i are the gain of the proportional derivative and integral controllers which are adjustable we can adjust we can vary we can make it constant we can vary. Among the above as I said because the differential increases the damping integral increases the accuracy PID controllers are extremely popular and successful and have been used in many uh, applications especially in aircraft like autopilot uh, and also in ships and in space vehicles and in even in helicopters. So, now let us consider the transfer function of a PD controller this is given by g of s is equal to k p by k s we write this uh, transfer function k d uh, is equal to uh, uh, this is equal to k d into s plus k p by k d. So, k p by k d is the ratio of the gains of the proportional and derivative controllers. This controller simply introduce a free 0 and the design requires a 0 be placed at appropriate location to adjust the gain accordingly. So, that you get the desired control uh, uh, control of the control variable. Let us now consider the transfer function of a p i controller. The p i controller is basically given by k p plus k i by s. So, that means, uh, which can be written as k p into s plus k i by k p divided by s. So, what we do here is the proportional gain k p is an adjustable amplifier gain amplifier parameter. In many system it is responsible for the process stability. In many cases k i is responsible for the error signal to going to 0. However, if it is set too high there will be oscillation and instability or integrator wind up or actuator situation. Okay. However, one thing we can clear is it introduces a 0 that is the transfer function becomes 0 when s is equal to minus k i by k p and it has a pole at s equal to 0. So, it has both poles and 0. So, we can try adjust uh, the, the pole location is fixed the 0 location can be adjusted depending upon uh, the values of k p and k i. So, we can vary it to see that. Now, let us consider the last of these controllers that is the p i d controller. The transfer function in this case is given by k p plus k i by s plus k d k d times s that is uh, you have both proportional integral and uh, derivative and this can be written as k d s square plus k p s uh, plus k i and times s. So, we clearly see that it has a pole at s equal to 0 that the origin. So, the pole is fixed and the numerator can be factorized is a quadratic equation it can be factorized. So, it has two locations where we can introduce 0. So, this requires a pole to be placed at the origin and two zeros at the desired location for adjustment of the dynamic response. The two zeros may be real yeah, or complex depending upon the gains used and it will always be on the left plane of uh, left half of the uh, the s plane though so that stability is ensured. P i d controllers can be digitally implemented with uh, microprocessors that is one of the reasons why it is very very popular among the control engineers. Okay. So, this is the final slide. So, let us summarize uh, what we have studied uh, in this uh, lecture. So, first we introduce the need for control especially in smart systems you cannot find a smart system without control the control algorithms. 
So, because we want smart system to perform certain smart functions like vibration control, noise control, shape control, temperature control. So, we need to give uh, design a control system to give sufficient inputs which alters the control variable and that is what the control system is. We also discuss the principle on which the control system works that is it requires the state matrix, it can requires the uh, output matrix, it requires the input matrix, the relationship between the state vectors and the output, output and the input, the gain matrix, the feedback control, uh, the open loop control, uh, these some of these concepts were introduced in this lecture. We also discussed about the mathematical models that are required for uh, the design of the control system. So, we described two models, one is based on transfer function and one is based on the state space which is an extended transfer function, I would call it as an extended transfer function. In the transfer function model we basically defined how do we define the get the relationship between the input and output for a single input and single output system where there is only one control variable to be controlled and in the second approach where there are multiple state variables that means you may arise a situation where multiple state variables needs to be controlled then we use to uh, develop this uh, state space model. So, in the state space model basically we have generated uh, the mathematical model to construct the state matrix, the input matrix, the output matrix and how we can actually generate the, the these matrices when we have a finite element type model which is a large model which is a multi input multi output models. Next we introduced what are called the stability of the control systems. So, what are the parameters that you need to look, what are the things that you need to ensure for the stability of the control system, how do we, how the poles affect the stability of the control system, what are the methods to actually move the poles to the position where the system is stable and what are the, what is the controllable and observability condition and uh, what are the, uh, uh, what are the condition to make the controllability of the input, controllability of the output and the observability conditions. And finally, we outline what are the design concepts, uh, the design procedures that we need to adopt, basic simple design procedures and we also uh, reviewed some of the very commonly used uh, uh, controllers like the, the PI controllers, PD controllers and PID controllers what would be the transfer function of such controllers, what are the advantages of each of this and how do we implement all these things. With this we end this lecture.